My first day there, I got one of the most valuable lessons I could have asked for, just as I was sitting down for my first meeting in Iraq. We got hit with a thousand pound truck bomb. The big picture is the military really is a national insurance policy. Its primary purpose is to deter war. And if you have to go to war, it has to win it as fast and as inexpensively as it can. My name is Kerry Kachijan. I have been in the military for 30 years. I was commissioned in 1982 and spent six years on active duty. I've spent the last 24 in reserve service. I've been recalled to active duty twice, mostly in support of the reconstruction of Iraq and Afghanistan. And trying to rebuild a country during a war is something we've never practiced in peacetime. It has unique challenges. We were principally trying to avoid combat. 90% of our force were civilians. But to get these people to these project sites, we had to conduct ground movements. And when we conducted ground movements, we were subject to probably the most intense attacks. Because this unit was organized, staffed, equipped, and deployed so quickly, there was no spare military equipment for it. We, in the reconstruction side, were precluded from buying anything. We could only lease. So finding a contractor that would lease us a combat vehicle in combat, we were striking out everywhere. So we had to go out and acquire sport and utility vehicles for transportation. Without armor, when you're moving down an Iraqi road in a sport utility vehicle, the one thing you have is speed. So we would drive as fast as we could sometimes 80 to 110 miles an hour. It was somewhat like a Mad Max move, rolling down the road in a sport utility vehicle. And we modify the SUVs as we needed to, uh, often ripping off the tailgates and putting a, a tail gunner in there with a Russian PKM machine gun because they would have BMWs. And they like driving up behind us at 110 miles an hour and doing a drive-by shooting. There were cases where we had people actually hanging their personal body armor outside the vehicle, duct taping it to the vehicle trying to provide some small level of protection. So one of the things we did is we went on the internet and we went shopping and we found aftermarket armor kits for these different types of sport utility vehicles. Well, they took two months to make. So we tried to put a rush order in. We flew them into Baghdad and I set up a chop shop. So things got much better over time. We learned a lot. We acquired better equipment as we went along. But the first year or two were particularly hard. I worked with great patriots that loved their country and wanted to achieve the same ends, and we were all unified and aligned. As far as boots on the ground, folks in uniform, they were all focused on getting it done. When you come out of war, there's always a risk because of potential budget cuts that you'll cut too far. You don't want to cut so drastically that we wind up with the situation we wound up with after Vietnam, where much of the Army had money to go out and do physical fitness training to wash their trucks and to paint rocks. If we are going to, in the future, rebuild countries or stay around and create stability, we need to practice that in our warfighting exercises. We've got to have a ready and relevant military 